Now, as I start the show, you're going to see that the title of this has a play on words, thinking rationally about fractions. The word irrational in our common language, uh, to some of us it means thinking reasonably. When you act rationally, you act as you should act. You, you act uh, reasonably. But from a mathematical standpoint, the word rational means a number that can be expressed as a fraction. So we're going to think rationally today about fractions using a manipulative that we haven't used yet in this class, but we're going to use a lot for this section, and it's called pattern blocks. Now, I have an opening slide here that's going to tell you about when you make a lesson plan, sometimes your lessons are strictly for building understanding. Generally, these are the first lessons you do on a new unit when you want to start off with a good foundation. After you've done the uh, initial lessons, then, of course, you're, you may be skill building with some lessons. For example, after we understand what multiplication is all about, then we'll talk about multiplying a two-digit number by a three-digit number. That's a, a skill that's built upon understanding, which uh, has been previously uh, covered. And in some lessons, you strictly build speed, making sure that we can multiply quickly or, or whatever. But, but just so that you're uh, fully aware of what this lesson is about, this lesson is strictly about building understanding. In other words, we're going to do lessons with pattern blocks today, and you and I know that kids aren't going to be carrying around pattern blocks in their pockets. So the purpose of this lesson is to build understanding so that we'll eventually get to the skill building part with paper and pencil and students will learn how to add fractions and multiply fractions and and do all those fraction operations but first we have to get the understanding good and solid and that's what this lesson is all about so let's meet these pattern blocks every pattern block kit in america has the same color scheme that is the hexagon is colored yellow what we're going to do is to call that yellow hexagon, we're going to say that's the number 1. It has value 1. So you should have two or three of the yellow hexagons. You should have a couple of the red trapezoids as well. And it makes sense that if two of these red trapezoids could fit together to form the same shape as that yellow hexagon, then we should call the red trapezoids one half. So sure enough, the red trapezoid is going to be called a half. You also have the blue piece, and that blue rhombus is such that if you take three of them and put them together in this shape, you can see the yellow hexagon shape again. So three of the blue rhombus shapes would make one yellow hexagon, so it makes sense that we should call each of those one-third. And finally, you've got the green triangles. If you took six of the green triangles and arranged them in this shape, you would have the same as a yellow hexagon. So it makes sense that we should define each of those as one-sixth. So these are the four pieces we're going to work with today. And just as a review, there's a yellow hexagon whose value is one. There's a red trapezoid whose value is a half. There's a blue rhombus whose value is one-third and a green triangle whose value is one-sixth. You might notice that today we're not going to be talking about fractions like one-fourth or one-fifth because we don't have pieces in the standard set of pattern blocks that make one-fourth or one-fifth. Okay, so now you've met the pattern blocks. Let's move on and talk about what we do with these pattern blocks. Well first we might have multiple pieces. Here I have two of the blue rhombuses. Now we would say that's two of the one-thirds. A shortcut way of saying that is that's two-thirds. Here I have three halves and I would write it like three over two, three halves. Here I have four green triangles, which would be four sixths. Now it's important that you notice that I haven't used terms like numerator or denominator yet. They'll come later. But if we talk about the numerator, which is, the, of course, the top number, you'll see that 
the numerator always tells you how many pieces you have. And the denominator always tells you what shape piece you're talking about. So if the denominator is a 3, it's going to be a blue rhombus. If the denominator is a 2, it's going to be a red trapezoid. And if the denominator is a 6, it's going to be a green triangle. So that's multiple pieces. Okay, let's talk about equivalence next. This is something that we certainly want to teach our students about the equivalence of fractions. 2 6. Would you grab 2 6 and put it in front of you, please? I'm hoping you're grabbing two of the green triangles because, again, the six tells you that it's a triangle and the two tells you how many pieces you're, you're getting. And certainly, you can see that if I turn those in this direction, it would make exactly the same shape as one of the blue rhombuses. So two-sixths is equivalent to one-third. Occupies the same space takes up the same amount of matter. Here's another equivalence. Four-thirds. Would you grab four-thirds for me, please? I'm hoping you're grabbing four of the blue rhombuses. After all, the denominator of three tells us it's a blue rhombus, and the numerator of four tells us to get four pieces. Now I'm going to rearrange these like that. That makes one whole and one rhombus left over. That's one and one-third. At this point, I'm not teaching students that we need to divide the top number by the bottom number. No, I'm just showing that this is an equivalence. Just like in the previous example, I'm not trying to reduce fractions in the form that you and I would reduce them in doing some kind of a mathematical operation. I'm just making students realize that a shape can have multiple names. Now, some students don't like that. They say, why don't you just have one name for a shape? And I say, well, we've got multiple names for nearly everything. Uh, teachers have multiple names. Uh, I go by Mr. Hill in your class. Uh, at, at home, I might be called Granddaddy by my grandchildren. So it's nothing uncommon to have multiple names for the same thing. And sure enough, equivalence just means two different names for the same fraction. Here's another example of equivalence. Nine, six. If you have nine green triangles, you could get them out. And six of them you could arrange in the shape of a yellow hexagon. Three of them you could arrange in the shape of the a red trapezoid. And what we now have would be one and a half. So nine, six must be equivalent to one and a half. Here's another example of equivalence, seven-thirds. So if you took seven blues, you could rearrange those by taking three at a time, and you would see that what we really have is two and a third. Now, tomorrow or the next day or at some point, we'll learn the division trick about dividing the numerator by the denominator and and letting that tell us how many holes we have and how much fraction part is left over. But for now, we're not concerned about that. This time I'm going to go sort of the opposite direction with equivalence. I'm going to start with a fraction, a half, which of course would be the red trapezoid. And I'm going to say, what other ways could we create this same shape? Well, one way I could do it is to use the green triangles. If I divided that red trapezoid in three equal parts, you can see that one half would be equivalent to three six. Now you might have noticed another equivalence here. Did you notice on this one that I could have said that a half is the same thing as a third plus a sixth? You see how I'm getting that? If I took a blue and a green and put them together, I could make a red. So a third plus a sixth is also equivalent to a half. Here's another example of equivalence. Two-thirds. Let's start with two-thirds. That would be two blues. What other pieces could I use to make this same shape? 
Well, you could use all greens. And if I used all greens, it would take four greens. That's four sixths to make the same shape. You may notice another equivalence to two thirds. Do you see that two thirds is also equivalent to a half plus a sixth? If you took the bottom part of that shape, which is our red trapezoid, one half, and stuck on the green triangle on top of it, a half plus a sixth would also be equivalent to two thirds. Okay, when you're ready, you're going to click on the next video in which we'll start adding fractions.